Hi, welcome to the next of our series of Practical Electromagnetics for Engineers. Today we're going to talk about something related to Coulomb's Law, which is called superposition. Um, that just means, uh, due to the Latin prefix super, which means above, position, um, position above, things just add up on top of one another. So how does this work? Um, we remember Coulomb's Law is given by this as the most common general expression, um, which essentially maps a vector at every point Rm, where we measure it, um, and that vector points away from the charge Rq to the point we measure. The size is proportional to the charge. We've got a 4 pi down here in the denominator to account for the radius of a sphere. The epsilon's a thing, and we know it drops off as the square of the distance um, because we've got one distance in the numerator and a distance cubed in the denominator. So, so this is all pretty straightforward. If we have our charge, let's call it Q1 down here, um, and we basically are going to measure at that point, it's going to create an electric field vector given by that dark line right there because it points away. Um, what happens if we add a second charge? Um, let's call this charge Q2. Well, it's going to map another vector pointing away from the second charge. If we add a third charge, exactly the same thing. Now, now this gets pretty damn confusing because it was hard enough to think of one vector being mapped to every point of space, but mapping three vectors to every point of space becomes really sort of mind-numbing. Um, so, so what's going on here? It turns out that what superposition says is you don't really have three vectors mapped to every point in space. What you have is the sum of all those vectors is what the overall electric field is going to be. And you remember we sum vectors by just putting them nose to tail like that, and we're going to get a resultant vector that looks like this. So the actual electric field, the vector mapped to the point Rm out here, where remember we've got our vector that goes to the point Rm that looks like that from the origin. The overall electric field is just the sum of all three charges. And if we want to write this for many, many charges, not just three, we have a general expression that says the total electric field is just the sum of all the different charges, uh, Q sub n, um, and the positions of those charges given by R sub n, so R sub 1, R sub 2, R sub 3, and so on and so forth. Um, let's take a look at a video that shows an example of this. Let's watch a MATLAB illustration of superposition. Here we have charges, and I'm doing them individually and plotting the electric field as a blue line as these charges move. Um, you see the electric field gets bigger when the charges are close to the point I'm measuring, and the field all is always a po is pointing away and is smaller here at the end. Um, let's turn on superposition. So instead of having 30 individual charges at different points along the line, we sum up an entire line of charge and plot the electric field vector for each one. Here we go. So this is exactly the same illustration as I did last time, except now we're just plotting all the electric field vectors for each point along this line indicated by the red dots. Again, you see when things are close, the electric field is big, the electric field always points away, and this gives you the idea of superposition but superposition says we don't have all these vectors, we just have one vector, which is the sum of these. So let's see what that looks like. Here we go, a small vector. Notice the vector is getting bigger, and this is not from each point, this is the sum of the electric field vectors from all the points. It's changing a lot now because the point's close, and this is the resultant vector from the entire line of charge. This red line is the sum of the electric fields from all those individual 30 points. Let's run it a couple more times, but this time look at three points in space rather than just one. So you can see that we're looking at three points in space. The electric field vectors are pointing in different directions at each of those points in space. And look at the line near the end. Notice how strongly it's changing as those charges get close. Again, let's rewind this and do this one more time three different points in space. The overall electric field is just the sum of all of those individual red dots, which are points of charge along the line. If we did this at every point in space, we'd have the vector field resultant from a line of charge. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. All we do is sum stuff up. You can see it gets really complicated, though, if you have a bunch of charges. Um, 
Well, this is where calculus comes to our rescue, and, and you may not think of calculus as something that can rescue you, but sometimes you're faced with hard problems and calculus actually becomes useful. Um, we know that in calculus, if we let this charge become really, really tiny, instead of representing it essentially as a, a individual charge, we're going to represent it as a tiny charge essentially at position R. And now we turn this summation sign into a fancier looking S, which means we sum up a lot of really, really tiny pieces, and we call that thing an integral. And so this essentially allows us to do some mathematical manipulation on this equation to actually solve it. It turns out that, that, that more commonly what you do is you express it this way. You say that essentially what you have is that you have a line of charges, the way we saw in the video, and we simply sum up all the individual pieces where we represent the line of charges not as discrete charges but as a distribution of charge and so this row variable row means a distribution in electromagnetic speak um, and it's a linear distribution L that says the distribution is on a line the way you saw in the video so we might have a line of charge that looked like that and then essentially you simply multiply by each little section um, DL. And if you do this integral, and you'll see some examples in any electromagnetics textbook, you can calcu calculate the electric field from a line of charges. Um, it turns out you can do exactly the same thing, not just for lines of charges, but for fields of charges or areas of charges and volumes of charges. I won't do the volume integral because you'll find this again, but if you want to do it over an area, um, you essentially have to do two integrals because you're not summing up little lines anymore. You're summing up boxes which exist maybe in X and Y space, um, but the idea is the same. You just sum the charge in each little box to find the electric field. And I know when you see a double integral things get a little bit frightening, but let's take a look at what this superposition would be um, and summing up uh, a bunch of vectors in terms of an area of charge in a video. We can also do the same thing with the sheet of charge rather than a line of charge. When I begin the illustration here, we're going to see a red sheet of charge divided into squares, and each charge we sum up to give the resultant red line, which would be an electric field vector, is going to turn green. So here we go. So here you see the sheet of charges. Notice the charge moving along that's green. That's the one we're adding up. And here's the resultant electric field vector. In other words, all the electric field vectors added up at this one point from each charge. You can see as we move along, the vector grows and grows and grows. It gets longer and longer as we add more charge. But the overall direction stays pretty much the same.